Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com here in San Antonio at the THSEA Coaching School and Convention with the winningest coach in Austin Vandergrift history. Yeah, that is true. Coach Drew Sanders. Who's in second place? Um, really no one at this time. I'm so far ahead, there's really not even my list. I mean, listed. it's not even a competition yeah. at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mostly because uh, nobody else has ever coached a game True. there for Vandergrift. True. I, I, I like to introduce myself as that, but then nobody ever asked the next part, so it sounds really impressive. Right. But. So we can cut this out. I mean, yeah. we don't, we're, we'll, we'll edit this out. In I, will, I will tell you this, though. This year at win number five will be 100 wins How about that? for the school. Yeah. Vandegrift High School mm-hmm. program, 100 wins. I think Highland Park has 700,000. That sounds right. <laughs> that, that tracks. Um, but still, you know, and, and I guess that's a good place to start is, you know, you are, you, you've been with this program since infancy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's now been around longer than a decade. Year 13. Year yeah. 13. Um, what do you think is the biggest, it's going to sound strange, but like what's the biggest difference? How, wh- how from where it started? From where it started to where it is now. That's a really big question. You know, I think um, – I just think back on the JV guys and, t- and that we started with and without any seniors. People don't understand, I, I think, how important having a senior class is to development because you have these sophomores and freshmen that think they're awesome because there's no seniors around to <laughs> kind of mess with them and push them and, mm-hmm. you know, all the things that happen in, in a good program. So I think that's probably the biggest uh, difference was I think back on the Young Bucks that helped me start the program. Uh, they just didn't know. Really, and then learn, learning how to win in big moments, you know, that, that had to come up at some point. You mm-hmm. know, you had to go back and finally find a way to beat your arch rival. Yeah. You had to figure that out. You had to win a certain round playoff game, all those things. So that's kind of what I think about in, you know, in the, all the years I've been there. Well, and now you guys are, you know, a, a team that – or a program that has expectations. It has standards. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, and, and of those standards, it's like, look, last year a 10-3 and three, a ten and three year. Mm-hmm. That feels like the standard at yeah. Vandergrift. It's like we should be a 10-win team. We should yeah. be a team that's contending deep in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and so given all that, we need, and, and especially considering all the circumstances around 2020, um, do, uh, do you consider 2020 to be a pretty pretty sizable success for the, for the program? Yeah, I think it was a, a big success, number one, because there were literal times in the summer where I was calling other coaches and calling leadership going, are we going to have a season? Yeah. I mean, I, and I distinctly remember them thinking, I think so. I mean, how yeah. scary a statement was that at that moment? And it, it was my son's senior year, mm-hmm. so I was very invested in that one year. But I was invested in all of our guys. And not only that, it was all of us coaches bonding together like we have to have a season. You know, we, we were together. Me and the Cedar Park head coaches now moved on. You know, we were always friends, but we really mm-hmm. were working hard to make sure, and several other coaches that, like, at least our part, we were ready to have a season. We were going to do whatever it took. I think that's the number one thing is it was a huge success because we got to play some games. And then in addition to that, managing all of the, you know, as a coach, what are you? You are a mentor. You're a guy that draws up plays. You're an encourager. In fact, we add to that nurse and doctor and everything <laughs> else this, pa- this past year. Because Public health official. <laughs> it was unbelievable what we were having to yeah. do. Um, and so to manage all that and still find a way to win and get deep in the playoffs, that's the deepest we've been. Um, in 6A, and so I was happy with that. Um, and then, of course, winning double digits, we know how hard that is. That's three years in a row. We've won 33 games the last three years. So, you know, we're excited about that, and we're excited about this year's team. Yeah, and, and, and speaking of, of, you know, this year's team, is, you know, the expectations don't go away, right. and, and they, you know, they carry on year to year, and, and you guys bring back a good core uh, from last year's squad. What, what maybe about this particular group of Vipers has you excited about, uh, about 2021? That's a great question. I think um, I really like our senior class. They are just so locked into what we're doing right now with zero egos. I mean, they have an ego. you got to have an ego a little bit. But when I say that, I mean they are responsive to coaches. They understand with, you know, I don't worry about them when they go away from us. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I've got so many great leaders uh, coming back that and in key spots. You know, I know we don't have a, a quarterback back, but we've got a lot of key pieces uh, coming back, so I'm thrilled with that. Um, you know, a, a little bit of a, a different kind of question is, is you know, there have been a couple of teams from the Austin area that have really merged as statewide powers and stuff like that. I think when people generally, you know, big picture think of high school football in Texas, especially at the 6A level, mm-hmm. they gravitate towards DFW, they gravitate towards mm-hmm. Houston, but but 
Austin has really come into its own yeah. recently. The, the likes of, of Westlake, I mean, down even down in the, the, the five airings, what Liberty Hill was able to do mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Whenever that gets to, to that point and, and you've got teams like Westlake going deep in the playoffs, are, I mean, it's strange to say, are you rooting for those teams? But is there a sense of, like, we want to help build up the, the, the profile of Austin area high school football? Yeah. You know, you got Austin Westlake who does a great job. Lake Travis yeah. has won multiple state titles. Cedar Park has won mm -hmm. uh, one or two, I, I believe. I think two. Yeah. Um, and, of course, Liberty Hill has been so good. So I, I, I know to get into that conversation at Vandergrift, yeah. I've got to win our first state title, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm thrilled to every time we go out there to try to let everybody know that there's some dang good football in Central Texas yeah. and some amazing football players um, and great coaches. And I think anybody that plays us and plays the guys in our district um, in the area know that when they play us, they're definitely not sitting there going, well, this is easy. This is Central Texas. Right. There's just no way uh, because there's just so many great teams and coaches. Right. I, I think that that's, that's exactly right. It's that the profile of, of, of high school football in, in Austin, I think, has been raised yeah. over the past decade. In, in, I think in part because of what you guys have done at Vandergrift. You yeah. know what I mean? That, that a that's lot. a program that, you know, is a force to be reckoned with. It's, you know, there, I'm sure there were times in the very early going where people were like, Vandegrift, yeah. who, is, who is this team? And now yeah. you see them in the, in, on the bracket when it comes out and you go, okay, that's a, that's a team we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Maybe we'll beat them, but that's a team we're going to have to deal with. Yeah, well, that, I mean, yeah. that means a lot. You know, and, and it, it, I will tell you, starting the program, and I describe, I would describe, like, well, where's Vandegrift when you start the program? And like, well, we're right in the middle of Lake Travis, Westlake, and Cedar Park. And they're like, whoa, no pressure, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, but at the same time, as a competitor, I was like, well, I want to I prove that we can build this from nothing into something that can compete with them. And we've beaten Cedar Park, um, and we've came really close to beating Westlake the last couple times we played them. We don't play them, and now we might play in the playoffs. Who knows, you know. Um, and then um, and Lake Travis come close, but, you know, they were a next level uh, for us. That was kind of when we played them, they was when they were in their their room, mm -hmm. of, you know, whenever they were doing the five to six titles in a row. I think they won five in a row. Five maybe? in a row. Yeah. Drive for five, yeah. The guy Impressive. Who used to, guy who used to work here wrote a book about it. Oh, All right. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, give me a name. Give me a guy that you're really excited about that maybe we don't know his name right now, like us being the Leering Press. We don't know his name, but by the time we get to the end of the year, we're going to be talking about him. Who's the mm -hmm. Who's the breakout, the breakout star or stars maybe uh, for this team? Van well, that's team. tough. So that doesn't include returning starters. I, I'm not um, supposed I mean, to mention can. a returning starter. It can. I, I purposefully vague. That's That's what they teach you. In yeah, journalism. that was good. That's good stuff. Thanks, man. You know, I mean, I, thanks. I appreciate. I've been working on it. Some of the Some of the guys that. Um, people know the Reese Beecham's of the world and, mm -hmm. and Ryan Shepherds. Everybody knows that those are our stat holder yeah. guys. Pro probably a lot of people don't know um, a guy named Griffin Schaefer. He was a corner mm -hmm. for us, all district corner. Um, but corners don't get a lot of recognition a lot of times. He is a tremendous tackler. He's a D1 lacrosse player. And uh, he's going to be moved position-wise on defense to our kind of the – we call it the dime backer. He just sits mm -hmm. in the middle and he just runs around and tackles people <laughs> is the easy way to describe that. And so I think a lot of people will know his name by the, by the end of the year. Well, and especially, you know, because I feel like whenever you're um – Whenever we're talking about Vandergrift in really serious ways, as far as making deep runs, it's it's yes, the offense can score, but but generally speaking, it's because the defense mm -hmm. is gonna it, it is is a dominant force out there. It's a, it's it's, the, it's leading the, the charge. Do you feel like this could be a team where the defense, um, you know, I I guess that's the way to put it. Where's the defense as far? What do you think is going to be? It's, Man, it's, I I think our defense is going to be okay. You know, we've led the district the last three years in defense. I'm really proud of that. Um, you know, we've got we've got guys back at each level. Tucker Harrison at the defensive line was an all-state defensive mm -hmm. end. You've heard of him. Um, our our lot, Griffin Schaefer is kind of a linebacker. He's he's there. Um, you know, I, I've got a guy that started um, several games. Sterling Emerson is a guy that people will hear about. He's 6'2", 225. Two uh, Mike linebacker. It's going to be very impressive. Um, and so, you know, you've got – You've got those guys that I think are going to kind of bang the drum, if you will, of, mm -hmm. you know, leading the charge as far as having a good defense again. Um, and I'm really excited about our offensive firepower this year. I think we averaged 30 points a game mm -hmm. last year. Um, I'm excited to see where we're going to go this year, even with the, even with the new quarterback. Um, we've got a lot of key pieces back. Well, 
we always expect good things from from Vandegrift. Um, if anything, because um, you know you got the winningest coach in, in, in school history there, and, and what, I, I what's not to like about that? I said that the other day to one of our football kids who's a jokester, and, and they said, Coach, actually, you have the most losses too in Vanderbilt <laughs> history. And so, you know, those kids, they'll keep you humble. They'll, they'll humble you quick. Yeah. Uh, Drew yeah. Sanders, head coach in Austin Vanderbilt. Coach, appreciate your time as yep. always. Always. Thanks, Rick. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.